Tuscaloosa to Frenzy! And McClellan, he could go! Burst of speed! Ah! Alabama opens the Rashinda Reed era with a victory! We talked about Alabama! Alabama reaches the college cut for the first time! Heisman Memorial Trophy. The first soccer championship in school history. Roll Tide and welcome to another episode of Tide TV This Week. I'm Roger Hoover, joined by my co-host Kenzie Hughes. Roll Tide, Kenzie. Roll Tide, Roger. It was a busy weekend and in pure Florida fashion, if you went to Tampa, you got wet. Yes, those rain showers we expect in the afternoon did appear at Raymond James Stadium. It was a long game as the Alabama football team took on South Florida in the first road game, the true road, first true road game of the year for the Tide. That's right, and Tyler Buckner got the start at quarterback, but it was slow going for the Crimson Tide offense. Alabama was held scoreless in the first half, while South Florida held the lead after the opening quarter of play. A 44-yard field goal gave the Bulls the 3-0 lead after one. A weather delay, like we mentioned before, just over two minutes into the second quarter, lasted almost an hour. When play resumed, the Alabama defense helped out the offense, though. Dallas Turner hit the Bulls quarterback Byron Brown, causing a fumble. It was recovered by James Smith. That led to the Tide's first points. A 30-yard field goal off the foot of Will Riker tied the game at three, and that was the score at halftime. On Alabama's second drive of the third quarter, the Tide got in the end zone. It was two explosive plays that set up their first touchdown of the game. The first, a big pass play from Ty Simpson to tight end C.J. Dupree. Simpson with the beautiful throw to Dupree in stride was good for 45 yards. Roydell Williams had the other big play. This run for 26 yards, but the tide near the goal line as Williams punched it in two plays later to make it 10 to three Crimson Tide. Then it was a big play by the Alabama defense. Malachi Moore intercepted a long pass from Byron Brown in the end zone as Moore locked the wide receiver on this play. Great play that on the ball that gave the Crimson Tide a turnover to ice the game. Roydale Williams ripped off another big run, this one for 48 yards to put the Tide deep in the Bulls' territory. From there, it was Crimson Tide quarterback Ty Simpson punching it in for the final points of the game as Alabama hung on to defeat South Florida 17-3. So I'm really proud of our players for the way they competed in the game. This was obviously a tough game, and uh, I thought the defense you know, did an outstanding job of only giving up three points, and that was after a turnover uh, that gave them good field position. So um, a lot of guys really played well. Uh, pressured the quarterback pretty well, didn't give up a lot of explosive plays, so uh, kept them off the board. And, you know, I, I know that we struggled a little bit on offense. Uh, we ran the ball fairly well, much better in the second half than we did the first. But I'm really proud of our players for the way they competed in a game. Um, you know, I need to do a better job of getting them ready to play in games like this, and we're a little flat in the beginning, but after the rain delay, I thought we competed better in the game. and. Now, I want our players to be happy about the fact that they won and enjoy it for 24 hours. Royale Williams had a game-high 129 yards rushing with 17 carries and a touchdown. Ty Simpson led the way through the air, completing five of nine passes for 73 yards. Simpson scores the game, other touchdown for the Tide, running it in from one yard out. Deontay Lawson led the team with a career-high 10 tackles, while Chris Braswell had a team leading three tackles for loss. Dallas Turner had a forced fumble, while Malachi Moore had the game's only interception. Well, it wasn't always pretty, but the Tide came away with a win in their first road match of the season. This weekend, Alabama hosts the Ole Miss Rebels at 2.30. That they do, and this week we found out the game time for next weekend's matchup as the Tide hits the road to Starkville. Alabama will take on the Mississippi State Bulldogs next Saturday night in Stark Vegas, baby. It's going to be a late kickoff, Roger, uh. 8 o'clock on ESPN. <laughs> a lot of us Bama fans will be driving over the day for the game, so it'll be a late drive back here to Alabama. Yeah, it will be a long day. I'll probably leave Davis Wade Stadium after the post game around 1.30 or so, but it should we be We love good. a late night. We love I, a late night. I guess so. <laughs> it should be a fun atmosphere under the lights. Now let's take a look at our Crimson Tide in the NFL Players of the Week. And, Roger, Alabama leads the NFL with 57 former players on NFL rosters. That's 10 more than second place Ohio State, which you love to see. We are starting with former Heisman Trophy winner Devontae Smith playing alongside Jalen Hurts. Smith caught four of five passes from his former Crimson Tide quarterback for 131 yards and a 63-yard touchdown reception in Philadelphia's win over Minnesota. 
Staying on offense, running back Brian Robinson Jr. had 129 all-purpose yards as he rushed 18 times for 87 yards and two touchdowns, while also adding 42 receiving yards on two catches in Washington's win over Denver. And staying in Washington, Darren Payne had a big day on the defensive side of the ball. Payne finished with five solo tackles, one sack, two tackles for loss, a pass deflection, and three quarterback hits. And for the Dallas Cowboys, Trayvon Diggs had a tackle and an interception in the Cowboys' win over the New York Jets. And a huge congratulations to John Mechie. Mechie missed his entire rookie season due to battling leukemia, and on Sunday, he returned to the field recording his first NFL catch, a 17-yard reception. It was great to finally see him out on the field again. Congratulations, John. We're rooting for you here, man. So we've already talked about Alabama's win over South Florida on Saturday. When we return, we'll take you behind the scenes for an all-access look at the Tide's second win of the season. Tide TV This Week is presented by the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Ford, visit your local Ford dealer, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. And you're making an impact, man. of Tuscaloosa. What a finish we're in store for. If you're looking to visit, visit this stadium. They got to figure it out here. It's more than a buzz at Brian Denny Stadium. It's electric. Here comes the time. I'm telling you, this place is rocking right now at Brian Denny. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week. The Alabama Crimson Tide football team hit the road this past weekend for the first time this season. The Tide left Tampa with the 17-3 win over the South Florida Bulls. Let's take an all-access look at that win. What an opportunity for USF with the 10th ranked Tide in town to take them on. will start with the football and they'll start at their own 25 yard line there goes Jace McClellan bouncing it to the numbers outside in front of the Alabama bench all the way out to the 44 yard line picks up 19. The punt group starts to form up on the Alabama sideline. Dallas Turner the speed to the edge to track down Byron Brown. Brown tries to get loose and brought down by Dallas Turner. It takes a great roll and it's touched by Alabama. And USF has it on the special teams giveaway. So South Florida strikes first. A driving rainstorm here in Tampa. It looks like a monsoon out there right there right now and it's certainly not a great environment to try to get your offensive consistency in the passing game going. Play is resuming here at Raymond James Stadium. The pocket collapses and the ball's ripped out. It is loose. The Crimson Tide have a takeaway. This was supposed to be the bounce back get right game off the Texas loss for Alabama. That is not what we have seen so far. And now we have another quarterback change for Alabama. Ty Simpson, the red shirt freshman, has now replaced Tyler Buckner. Swing pass, Kwan Powell blown up back at about the 12 yard line by Malachi Moore. Ty Simpson, that's what he needed, drops one into Dupree. Straight ahead run, Roy Dell Williams. He's in for the touchdown. And finally, one of these two teams finds the end zone. Play action again, a shot into double coverage, and it's intercepted in the end zone. Malachi Moore floats under the shot from Byron Brown and gets a takeaway for the Alabama defense. Roydell Williams bounces it to the left-hand side. He's in the open field. Finally slides down inbounds at the 30-yard line of USF. There's the quarterback sneak. There's the push for Ty Simpson. And there is the Sultan away touchdown for Alabama.
Legacies rise from purpose. They're developed through passion, determination, and the power to follow through. This is where ambition meets opportunity. What happens next is up to you. The University of Alabama, where legends are made. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week. After a road trip to Tampa this past weekend, the Alabama Crimson Tide football team returns home to Bryant-Denny this Saturday to take on Ole Miss. For a preview of the Tide and the Rebels, our Christopher England joins us now. Christopher? Alabama opens SEC play this weekend as the Crimson Tide welcomes the 15th ranked Ole Miss Rebels to Bryant-Denny Stadium. Alabama has won seven in a row against Ole Miss and leads the all-time series 58-10, including a 29-2 record over the Rebels in Tuscaloosa. Last season in Oxford, Ole Miss jumped out to a 10-0 lead. With the Tide trailing 24-17 late in the third quarter, quarterback Bryce Young connected with Ja'Cory Brooks for a five-yard score to tie the game at 24. The Alabama defense held in the fourth, and Will Reichard hit two field goals to secure the 30-24 win. The last time the Rebels came to Tuscaloosa two years ago? Here we go. Get your popcorn ready. Coach Kiffin and the Rebels got their popcorn ready, but it was the Tide that provided the entertainment. Alabama dominated Ole Miss. Brian Robinson Jr. rushed for 171 yards and four touchdowns as the Tide led 42-7 midway through the fourth quarter en route to the 42-21 win. Lane Kiffin is in his fourth year at Ole Miss. During that time, he's compiled a 26-13 and record as head coach of the Rebels. He's very familiar with Coach Saban and the Crimson Tide, having served as offensive coordinator in Tuscaloosa for the 2014 through 2016 seasons, helping the Tide win the 2015 National Championship, a 45-40 win over Clemson. This season, Ole Miss enters Bryant-Denny undefeated at 3-0, winning by an average score of 52-16. The Rebels picked up those three wins against Mercer, Tulane, and Georgia Tech. The Rebels defeated the Yellow Jackets last week in Oxford, 48-23. We're looking forward to, you know, SEC opener. Ole Miss is a really, really good team. Uh, Lane has done a great job there with the program. Uh, this is one of the best offensive teams. Uh, in the country in terms of things that they do, multiples that they have, the way their players are coached and how they execute. Ole Miss leads the SEC and is fourth in the nation in scoring offense and second in the conference in total offense at over 526 yards per game. Leading the Rebels on offense is junior quarterback Jackson Dart. Dart is second in the SEC in total offense at 355 yards per game. Dart has completed 66% of his passes for 852 yards with seven touchdowns and just one interception. Dart is also the Rebels' leading rusher as he's compiled 213 yards on the ground, averaging almost seven yards per carry and 71 yards per game. The Rebels will look to get running back Quinshawn Judkins going as he led the SEC in rushing last season as a freshman, but has been dealing with an upper body injury this season. Judkins averaged over 120 yards per game last season, but this season the sophomore from Pike Road, Alabama has managed averaging only 48 yards per game, but he does lead the SEC with four rushing touchdowns. Trey Harris had an incredible start to the season as he had six receptions for 133 yards and four touchdowns against Mercer. In all, Harris has eight catches on the season with five of those being touchdowns, but he was injured in the first half of game two against Tulane and didn't play last week against Georgia Tech. In his absence, Jordan Watkins has led the Rebels receiving core, averaging over 96 yards per game with a touchdown. There are several former Alabama assistant coaches, grad assistants, and even a former player under Coach Saban on Lane Kiffin's coaching staff. That includes the defensive coordinator for the Crimson Tide for the past five seasons until this year. During the offseason, Pete Golden made the move to Oxford to lead the Ole Miss defense. These guys play well, they play hard. You know, Pete does a good job with the defense. They got a good scheme. Uh, I think they're playing a lot better on defense because of it. And um, they play with a lot of inspiration and they, they do a good job of executing the scheme. 
Alabama is 15-1 and in SEC home openers under Coach Saban, winning by an average score of 37-14. to The Crimson Tide also owns the best home winning percentage in all of college football at 839. Kickoff is scheduled for 2.30 in Bryant-Denny Stadium. It's the SEC on CBS Game of the Week. Stay with us. We'll have more Tide TV this week coming up next. Welcome back to the Crimson Tide production studio. I am Kenzie Hughes, he is Roger Hoover, and this is Tide TV This Week. We've talked a lot about football, but our fall sports have been checking boxes in the win column all season long. That's right, Kenzie, and joining us to help us unpack all the wins, the ties, and the draws is our Delaney Jones. Delaney? It was a busy week for Alabama soccer. The Tide kicked off SEC play against the 23rd ranked Georgia Bulldogs last Thursday, as well as finishing non-conference play undefeated after a 5-1 victory over Mercer on Sunday. Alabama started off the first half against Georgia strong by scoring within the first five minutes of the game. Felicia Knox passes it up the middle to Gianna Paul, who takes it all the way to the box and shoots it into the bottom corner of the net to make it one to nothing Alabama. Georgia would respond a few minutes later with this goal by Nicole Vernis, which made it a tie game at 1-1. That would be the final goal of the game, leaving Alabama tied Georgia 1-1 to open SEC play. Alabama was then on the road Sunday in Macon, taking on Mercer, and the Tide never stopped pressing throughout the entire game. Alabama scored all five of its goals for the day in the first half of the game, with everyone on the front line getting involved. Gianna Paul, Felicia Knox, Leah Cundy, Cameron Silva, and Nadia Ramadan were all able to find the net in Sunday's matchup. The Tide left Macon with a 5-1 victory over Mercer. And I had a chance earlier this week to talk to Coach Hart and the team who shared their thoughts on the team's performance so far this season. Thanks, Delaney. You know, Roger, our ladies on the pitch have been all gas, no breaks since their College Cup appearance just a year ago. Absolutely, not to mention the fact that they're chasing another SEC championship under head coach Wes Hart. Much like Rashinda Reed's volleyball program is looking for their first as they wrapped up pre-conference play this past week. Alabama came out swinging, winning the opening set in Trojan Arena 26-24, but Tor Troy had a surge, taking sets two and three. In set four, the Crimson Tide hit a match best 5-20 to take the win with a score of 25 to 21 and force the deciding set five. In set five, Alabama carried the momentum and took home the 15 to nine win behind dominant performances from Callie Kiefer and Kendall Ray. Then anyway. Rashinda Reed and company hosted Grambling State in Foster Auditorium. for I was Crimson. excited they were home. Yeah, right? I mean, it's Crimson <laughs> Chaos Night. Who wouldn't be? The Tide collected their seventh sweep of the season, tallying scores of 25-18, 15, or excuse me, 25-17, to 17, and 25-15. to 15. Kendall Ray led again. Also, Callie Kiefer, Micah Grinowitz finished with 10 or more kills in five of the last six matches. The Alabama men's tennis team opened its season, hosting the three-day SEC Big Ten Challenge. Overall, the SEC dominated their respective matches, winning 39 out of 52 total matches over the three-day tournament. Alabama freshman Andre Zimnock tied as the overall winner after going undefeated with three singles and three doubles wins in his first collegiate match. Sticking to the hard court, the women's tennis team began their season on the road at the Debbie Southern Furman Fall Classic this past weekend, finishing the tournament with five doubles and nine singles wins. Ludmilla Binchak, ranked 46th overall, led the Crimson Tide after going two of three in both singles and doubles, including two victories over ranked opponents. The 13th ranked men's golf team also began their season on the road at the Fighting Illini Classic, placing fifth overall with a 36-hole total of 581 after unplayable playing conditions and inclement weather canceled day three. Three Alabama golfers finished inside the top 20. Nick Dunlap led the way for UA, shooting two under 138. As a team, the Crimson Tide led the 15-team field with 36 total birdies. 
Speaking of leading the field, Alabama's Doris Lingle began her career in Crimson by clocking a 16-12-10 to win the women's 5K individual title at the Southern Showcase. She led the 13th ranked Crimson Tide to a 14th, for, excuse me, a fourth place finish. The Alabama men were also in attendance as Jacob Harris, Carson Burian, and Hudson Hurst all clocked top 20 finishes to lead the Crimson Tide men to a top three finish. It was quite the performance from Dan Waters' squads, and how about the freshmen stepping up huge in their first race with the script A? Love to see it. Stay with us. We'll have our plays and players of the week coming up next. Tide TV This Week is presented by the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Ford, visit your local Ford dealer, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. Legacies rise from purpose. They're developed through passion, determination, and the power to follow through. This is where ambition meets opportunity. What happens next is up to you. The University of Alabama, where legends are made. Those are our plays of the week brought to you by Legacy of Hope. Now, let's take a look at our players of the week. Freshman Andrea Zimnock finished the SEC Big Ten Challenge tied for the overall winner, finishing undefeated with three wins in both singles and doubles matches. And in her first career race, Doris Limgall finished with a first place individual title in the women's 5K after recording a time of 16-12-10 at the Southern Showcase. Congratulations to our players of the week. That's all the time we have for this week's episode of Tide TV This Week. We hope you enjoyed it, and we look forward to seeing you back right here again next week. Have a great week, everyone. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. This has been a presentation from Learfield.